Right, here we go. Round, I don't know, three, I think it is. Obviously, I've got it painted in bits, as I've already said. But, so you spend lots of time masking. I hate masking. I just haven't got the patience for it. And, as we know, half-hearted masking or half-hast masking results in disasters. So, what I haven't said is that the bottom is going a different colour. Well, the finish is okay. I don't like the colour. It's glossed up nicely. No runs to speak of. Or no runs. Just need a minimal of polish to get it right. I have got some spectacular runs in the white though. I'm going to try and get rid of them or maybe even paint the roof again. Let's see how it goes. The fella highlights the dents, runs rather, and the text of paint either side of it. It also gives something a bit more stable, a bigger platform for you to sand on so the block doesn't wobble. Nine times out of ten, when you sand it runs, you end up sand it through the paint either side of it. So you need something just to. Uh, I don't know, just a bit, it's almost like a landing pad for a, for a sander to sit on. You're sanding on something as opposed to wobbling either side. It works a treat. Land's glossed up lovely now. It really is shiny like a mirror. Okay, <clears throat> all masked up again, this time so I can spray neat mainly, but I did have some rub throughs, so I could do some blow ins. So I'll mask up again, the van all clean underneath, it's a bit of a crap shot really. So hopefully this is the last time I'm going to mask the van up. Another little blow one I got to do there. See, put a curl in the tape just so I don't get a hard edge. Well, it took me two days of laying under the van. Are you brushing? Spot primarily bare metal, getting any loose flaky paint off. Finally, I got it. It to a stage where I. <laughs> Put some rust protection on it. I'm not sure if I was supposed to, but I've sprayed some wax over it all. I think there's probably a mistake. It's all a bit sticky you now. But I got it. <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. You can see it's oozing out of every pore. I was covered with it. Sprayed up in the hinges. Oh, that looks bad, isn't it? The picture. Anyway, it's done. But then the problem has been waiting to happen. Whilst I was underneath, my hose caught in one of these clamps. Came crashing down. 
I haven't broken the paint, but it's left a dent that we have to call it a perma dent. It's gonna live there and then hit me in the head. Hey ho. Anyway, time to get it out. <coughs> I was hoping it get straight on to paint work because I've already paired these side panels. I had to make one of those new holders for the bolts. And most of the paint has already been off. You can see the repairs in here. They all need a rubber the surface prep pad. There's the doors. Pretty much ready to go. I didn't dipped in caustic. I didn't have quite enough caustic, I don't think, or it wasn't hot enough or whatever. But this fuel tank panel. No one here ready for paint. Look at it. Didn't look too bad before I put it in the caustic tank. But coming out it's got rid of all the filler and paint and you can see it's like a tea bag. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. These little sections don't fit in the folder. So I've bent the seam back on the bottom. To have another look. It's getting more and more scared by the minute and look oh god here we go just when i thought i was on the home street not looking too good so i used to cut the damage out and then try and finely tune the panel and hold it there and weld it and the first tag it moves so this time i just cut a slice through and started to cut down but i've left Panel, the old panel behind so it's actually supporting the repair panel quite nicely so I put it in spot weld cut a bit more if you angle the grinder down we call it a scarf joint in carpentry almost it's not quite as close as that that's the nearest thing I can liken it to you can see the old panel is still in place so the old metal is still in place and I'm spotting down here I'll pull that out now the panel is uh, virtually in position without much need for to division. I'll spot it up. It doesn't look very pretty, but there's a good penetration, quite a good weld repair. And you start to clean it off. No, it doesn't look too bad since I'm making it up as I go along. My welding's better than my camera work though. My welding is pretty poor. There we go. We get in there. Learn as we go. Yeah, pretty much done. A little bit more work needed. But the rest of it is quite severely put in. Really speak nice. I've cut it all off. And my welding skills. If I, if I try to weld that all the way over there, I'd have a massive distortion. Quite badly pitted though. So I've actually this, this is the Thursday before the bank holiday weekend and I've actually managed to find some work so I go to work all weekend. So here we go and decide what to do with that. Can I repair it? Can I not? I'll hedge my bets I think. I'll keep that to one side as a pattern and I'll start making a new one. Back in the, the trusty folder, bit of tap in. It's actually coming together okay. Then it oversized, still needs a bit of to divide in, but generally speaking, I'm pleased with that. I'm using a bolster just to tap, 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 try and keep the corners nice and, nice and sharp. Overall, it's coming up anything. I started to cut the end now to make that little radius on it. Yeah, that. Weld it up, clamped it down, try and keep it straight. Some weights in it, massive heat sink. Yeah. 
Oh well, it got good penetration. And then back. Looking good. Patting myself on the back here, right? Eh? To myself. I don't really like all these rust converting products, but I've been given it a go for a few days, mainly because I haven't been able to get out and do any work. So I have to go for it. I have changed, reapplied the, the group a few times. So it's not just a one application, but bear with me. It says to why you brush it while it's wet. Actually, it comes up okay. Unless you do that, you need two hands. Not too bad at all. Get it washed off and be back. Taking four applications to get this clear. So if you're in a rush, probably cutting the panel off is much quicker. But since I've had to work, I knew I couldn't be working on this. I thought I'd give it a go. And as I say, not quick, but. Pretty good, a little bit left there, so I'm going to give that a bit of a wipe brush in again now. I'll even get the dye grinder on it. And I've got a small perforation there, which, in honesty, I might just drill out just for ventilation and give me another hold for wax injection. Here's the detail piece, come together okay. Yes, that's okay. I got some phosphoric acid on that now. Needs a bit of fit in to get that on there. Might repair it. Just it's not quite sharp enough in there, but it's not at all. Quite pleased since I'm making it up as I go along. Anyway, a bit of spray through primer, a well through primer. You get the idea. Alright, all ready to weld. A seal all behind with, uh, I keep wanting to call it Silit Bang, but it's a. Uh, Built Humber Hydro 80, give it two coats of that, abraded and sprayed it with some zinc well through primer. The lesson I've learned is to put a bit of metal on before clamping because this thin metal bends easy and I've clamped it down onto my RSJ. Just to uh, try and keep it straight. I missed a couple of days, but basically you've seen me sanding and priming and filling and sanding loads of times. Well, I primed back doors yesterday and the side panels. Really <laughs> pairs. Pretty good. I mean, I whacked some high bill on the mirrors today. So I've got quite a bit to sand off today. I give them a quick buzz off with a DA and 500 grit. But now I'm wet sanding. You can see the guide coat. The door started off black like this. So, here we go, 
again. I'm sick of it now, if I'm honest. But I think it's going to be worth the effort. Well, I finished flattening this one. Down one of the dips, you can still see little bits of black, but I think that's fine. A lot of these areas I've gone through is, is it's just where they come from the factory from the press and they were never meant to be as flat as I'm trying to get it. And obviously I can't sand down in that spot welds. And these bits around here is, is me trying to get rid of what I'm calling birthmarks. You know, these ripply panels came in the factory like that. I mean, it's flat now. I got one little hole there that I need just to put a little tiny skin in. Well, when all, it's pretty good. You don't really have to go to all this guide coat and flat in, but when you, spray, when you like me and just crap it spray in, the better you can get it to start with, the better the result will be. Well, I suppose that goes for the professionals. But if you have to flat back to get a polish or to get some dust out, if you've got any furry bits that you haven't sanded back, you never ever get them out. You, you end up trying to polish out imperfections from the top coat that are actually down in in the primer. I have to reprime this panel, obviously. Um, I'll probably get away with just spot prime it with some etch, but depending on how the other one goes, if it's worth putting some in the gun, then I'll reprime it, which will set me back a day. But hey ho, got nowhere else to go at these days. Uh, graphic illustration of how guide coat will show up imperfections. Like I said, his rippling is probably, well not probably, did come from the factory like it. And, and showing up what I've put a little skim of filler and trying to fill some of these ripples. Uh, if I glossed over that, it'd stick out like a sore thumb. So you either not go to fill it so that it looks natural or normal or factory or you got to get it flat. If you try and do something halfway in between it just looks poor. Crap to be honest. So And you would never, never have seen that without the guide coat. And I'm using a 150 mil DA, keeping it nice and flat. Tendency is people start digging in the air just to get the black off, and all you're doing is putting the dents back in. Sounds stupid, really. Seen so many apprentices. Again, I don't work in the body shop. I'm a joiner. Dig in, dig in the sander in to try and get the black out. You do get it out, but if you've got a dent, you don't sand the bottom of the dent. You've got to sand. If you've got a valley, making the valley deeper doesn't get rid of the valley. You need to move, remove the mountain either side of it. If that makes any sense. So, you know, for instance, that there. I turned, turned, sanded on an angle, it would be gone in a second. But the dentist will be there. Anyway, stop preaching. <laughs>